Today I'm going to be showing you the new coolant water block. Um, it's for the 285. It's called the VID NX285 um, to water cool my EVGA for the win edition. Um, I bought three, so I'll be water cooling all of them. Um, I'm going to unbox it. I'm going to do a, a real rough guide um, showing you how to fit, how to basically strip the card and, and fit the block. Um, I won't do any kind of in-depth one. Um, just because I'm sure Trubitar will do uh, a proper guide um, when he gets his, if he's not already got them. Um, so first I'm going to show you the basically the contents. Um, you get a thermal pad, well actually two thermal pads, two different thicknesses for different areas, some thermal paste and your screws. Um, you get the, a picture of the layout of the block itself to show you the size of the pads, so you know how, how, how big they need to be and where they need to go. Um, you also get some instructions in there, really simple to fit. And there's the block itself, really nice block. Um, full cover block, actually comes all the way right over to the MOSFETs. Um, the other blocks I've seen, EK, um, Aqua, GFX, um, Danger Den, theirs doesn't go quite as far to there. That's, theirs ends there and the rest is just sort of like a heat plate to cool the MOSFETs. The coolant block fully cools every component of the card that needs to be cooled. Um, same design as the old one, still got the, so you can see the coolant through there, but uh, to me personally that's a bit of a waste of time as 99% of the cases this is actually face down so you, you'll never ever see it unless you've got a coolant case where it is upside down and that's actually on the top. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of it's just one of those things, but it looks nice anyway. Um, great quality as always. Um, I've got these connectors it's rather than nozzles and tubing to connect the three cards up just for the, a nice tidy appearance. It's the VD2, just in case you're wondering if, which you need to buy. Okay, um, next you need to do is get your card and remove the 12 screws 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 plus the two screws on the end um, the instructions actually tell you to remove 20 screws and they actually to remove these little tiny ones as well um, but I'm not too sure about removing them um, I'll show you why in a few minutes. And once you've removed them screws, obviously keep them safe in case you need them again. Um, and just gently, basically, just tease the um, the PCB away from the, the actual air block itself. Um, once it's off, you'll have to remove the fan wire. Which is, it's all pretty simple. Um, and you're pretty much left with that, which is the block. You can see um, EVJ done a great job with the thermal paste, just blobbed it on. Um, but that's the the air block removed. Then, next job would be to clean the card up. As you can see, I've already done it. Um, there's the GPU there. The, the little screws I mentioned actually hold this bracket on that surround the GPU so I've actually left that on because I don't I mean to be honest looking at it I can't I don't even know what what it's actually doing there whether it's some kind of support for the GPU itself I'm not too sure but the block goes on fine with it on so I don't understand why they've, they've told you to remove those screws um, but as I said I've left it on um, then your next job is To fit the thermal pads, um, you could either stick them straight onto the actual card that way, but I've I've done it the other way around. I've used the block. Um, you put one there, one there, and one there for the memory. Um, you've got a few little chips there, there, and there, and then you've got this little one here, and then you put another on the end there, which is called the um, voltage regulators. I think that was the MOSFETs. Um, then basically it's as simple as putting the bare card onto the block and tightening the screws. As easy as that. 
and then you actually left with is this finished block. And there it is, it's on. Um everything about the block to me just it just screams high quality. Everything about it. Um just a re really nice built block. Um extremely heavy. Um so definitely need to be using the screws to support it in the case. Um because there there's there is a lot of weight to it. Um but that's it pretty much. That concludes the showing you the block and the rough guide on how to fit it. Um, anyone could fit this block, really anyone could. I've never ever water cooled a video card in my life, um, and it took me probably 10 minutes to do. I mean, the, the hardest actual bit is cutting the thermal pads to size. That's that's the most difficult bit. Um, other than that, everything's real straightforward. Um, obviously, these will make my life a lot easier, and um, when it comes to fitting the tubing because I'm going to have to cut little bits of tubing to go between each card. Um, I've also bought um, a couple of these, um, pretty standard, but they've added a nice little touch which you probably won't be able to see. Um, but it's got like a little Coolant's logo and Coolant's written along it. Just just makes it look quite nice compared to the other ones. And I've also bought um, the angled nozzle. Yeah, I've got one here open. Um, that will then sit at the top to head back towards my pump or the radiator or whatever. One at the top, and one at the bottom. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I will um, complete the video with, I don't know, just showing what sort of temperatures I'm getting now compared to what I was getting before. Okay, thanks for watching. Right, I've got the water blocks in. Um, really nice installation, really easy, so easy to do. Um, I've got it on a separate loop from my CPU um, using a double radiator um, which I'm not too happy with um, because well I was using a, my better radiator and um, I had used some longer screws and pierced, managed to pierce four holes in the radiator and not know about it so when I set the loop up um, everything was okay for about a minute or two fluid started pumping through and then major disaster it was like squirting out the top and out the bottom. Um, luckily, it was all going in that direction, um, so there was no actual damage to anything. Um, but I mean, literally, there was nowhere to stop it. It just kept, it just kept going and going and going until basically the I mean, obviously, because the lowest point until the fluid was gone, basically, um, all over my carpet, all over my truck, everything, everything was just covered. It was going everywhere. Um, luckily, as I said, it didn't go anywhere near my components. Um, you can see. Um, the OCZ Reapers that I'm using, they're installed, 6 gigs. Um, separate loop for my CPU, which goes down to the north bridge, into the CPU, up the top, into the quad radiator on the top, back out, and back to the um, pump. Um, temperature wise, at the minute it's 40, 40, and 44. There's no point me zooming in because you probably won't see it anyway. Um, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm not amazed really, but I'm happy with that. Um, obviously, it'll be a lot better when I get a new um, dual radiator in the front. If anyone can recommend a decent one, that'll probably be helpful. Um, I was thinking like the Thermo Chill one, the PA120 or whatever it is, but I think that's actually a triple rad and it needs to be a a dual, it needs to be a dual rad um, and not X flow like this one is, as you can see, one goes in the bottom and at the top. Um, it has to be um, a, a standard one. Um, yeah, we're not going to recommend a decent one, that'd be good. Uh, I'm going to perhaps do another video showing um, maybe the, the temperature differences under load, and I will probably, obviously do some overclocking, see how much more I can push these um, cards and have their water cooled. Um, okay, that's it. Thank you for watching.